What is going on YouTube? Joe here with Color Nation Media and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon X and Y Battle Spot Live. This is episode number 116 and coming into today we are sitting nice and pretty at a 47 game differential. 140 and 93 is our exact record. We are coming off a double loss in the previous episode and uh, we're here with all new faces today. Uh, some of these Pokemon I've used before and uh, maybe one or two I haven't used before so uh, we'll have some some new things going on. I don't know how confident I am in this team. It seems like I brought some extra silly things this time. So it's not like they're just like not competitive, but I, I feel like I didn't bring enough power to actually succeed on Battle Spot. So we'll see what happens. I am recording a little bit earlier than usual, so hopefully I don't run into any Japanese players because, you know, they love their OU stuff. And this team just probably won't win against that. That's just what it is. Uh, normally, I bring at least a couple of powerful things. I feel like I kind of dropped the ball on that this time. But anyway, we're just here to have fun. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I would like to get out of our little uh, two-game losing streak bunk after losing both in the last episode. So uh, before we get started today and before I give you guys a little overview on the team... Uh, just a friendly little reminder, if you haven't done so already and you would like to show some support to the channel and the series and all that fun stuff, it only takes a couple of seconds uh, to click that thumbs up button right below this video or leave your thoughts in the comment section below. If you have a suggestion for me for a Pokemon you would like to see used in the series or whatever it may be, comment section is a great place for that. As always, you guys have been very supportive as of late. Uh, I've been giddy. I've been noticing that there's some more regular people coming around, people that stop by every single day to leave a comment. Uh, that number is increasing, and that's what I like to see because I'm making friends with a lot of you guys. Uh, you just, I don't know. You're cool guys and girls. Guys, guys and girls, people. You're cool peeps. I just really, I really just said that. Let's, let's move on. Um, here we go. Okay, so we have Choice Scarf, Heracross, which I, I don't know. It's my favorite Heracross, so that's what I'm bringing. We have Choice Band, Flygon, which I know I usually use a special Flygon, but I haven't used physical in a while, and I've got like three or four Flygons. I cycle through them. Uh, so there we go. That's what I'm bringing. Then we have Nasty Plot Raichu with Encore and a Focus Sash. That is a lot of fun to use. Uh, we have Assault Vest Flareon. That is my favorite Flareon with the Flame Charge and all that jazz, so that's what I have. Uh, then we have Physically Defensive Rocky Helmet Alomomola, which is strictly there for Talon Flames, and the Kangaskhans, which seem to be running rampant all over the place. Alomomola can pretty easily handle them. Uh, it has the Regenerator as well, so it's really my only defensive Pokemon. Then we have Sharpedo with the Protect and the Destiny Bond Speed Boost. Uh, and a life orb, so that is a lot of fun. That pretty much rounds out the team. I don't really have anything else that I wanted to say. Pretty straightforward, pretty offensive, which is a little bit unusual for me. I normally like to bring at least two defensive Pokemon to Battle Spot, but eh. eh it's only 3v3, so some offense uh, could help out. All right, we got Ben from Belgium who says free EM Corefish. And he is bringing some power here. Skarmory, Dragonite, Nidoking, Azumarill, Mega Manectric, and Mamoswine. Alrighty, so right off the bat, I see a couple of ground-type Pokemon. So Alamomola seems like a good Pokemon to bring, but you got the Manectric. And Nidoking is usually special, not physical. So I like physical Nidoking, but nobody really uses it. So there's that. Uh, that Azumarill is going to be a problem. Alamomola can handle the Azumarill, and it can handle the Mamoswine, but, uh, and it might be able to handle Dragonite depending on what it has, so I kind of feel like I might want to bring it anyway. Um, the extreme speed on the Dragonite is going to be a problem, because that can kind of counteract my speed boosts, flame charges, priority is just bad. This team does not like priority, in fact I don't have any priority on this team at all, okay that's, that's one weakness. Um, one of many weaknesses. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What do I want to start off with? Um, I don't know what my opponent is going to start off with. But I guess we will... Hmm, maybe Manectric? Manectric, Manectric, what do I have for that? Uh, I've got Flygon. So we'll lead off with Flygon here. And we will bring the Alamomola. And then... Hmm... Third Pokemon here. I don't want to bring Sharpedo. I already have a Water type Pokemon. Uh, Raichu really isn't going to do us a whole lot of good because Lightning Rod is a thing, and there's a couple of Ground types as well. 
So I'm going to say that Heracross is probably our best bet. The Choice Scarf might just help us out, whereas uh, Fire types really don't do a whole lot for us in this situation. So Heracross it is. I don't really have much for that Skarmory, unfortunately. Uh, and actually, if he brings that, that could be a problem. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Not uh, too confident with this team, like I said before. But uh, that doesn't mean we're not going to try, and that doesn't mean we're not going to get any wins. We might not break even like we did with the last team, but we'll see. Uh, Mamoswine is actually going to start things off here against Flygon. And is Ice Shard a one-shot? That's what I want to know. I don't know that it would be. Well, it's four times super effective, so I think I need a hard switch here. Um, he's not going to go for EQ, so Alamomolo is really the only switch that I have. That's what I'm going to go for. I'm not going to risk it, because if he does go for Ice Shard, I think I might just be dead or close to it, and then if he has rocks by any chance, Flygon might be dead. So he's going to go for the Icicle Crash. I could have went for the freaking, whatchamacallit, the U-turn, unless he's Scarfed, and that does absolutely no damage whatsoever. Uh, I kind of want to go for Toxic to start Toxic stalling some things, but no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to Toxic stall everything. I'm going to Scald. At least it's super effective. He's going to withdraw. What do you have for that? Uh, Minectric. Okay, yeah, that is a problem. I should have went for the Toxic. If we can get a burn, that would be fantastic. That would be fa oh, Wow, that did more than I thought. And we get the burn, so we're going to get some residual damage going on. I am going to go for a Protect here because he is going to make it evolve. And I don't want to bring in something. I don't want to bring in like Flygon to have it be intimidated. So we want that Intimidate gone first. So protect it is, and when we switch out, we'll get back up to full health. I mean, we're pretty much there already, but yeah, is he not Mega? No, he goes for the Vault Switch. Okay, so maybe he's Choice. Now that is interesting. That is very interesting. That is something I would do. I like to use regular uh, Minectric. Choice Specs and Choice Scarf are both pretty good. Uh, I'm going to bring in Flygon again here. That is, that is very, very, very interesting. If he Mega Evolves now, he just made the absolutely, you know, the best play ever. Nope, he just Volt Switches again. I'm going to say he's choiced into that. Alrighty, um, well, with that being the case, I'm going to U-Turn out here, because U-Turn plus Burn should kill you, because I am choice banned. Um, but if I had to guess, I would say you're going to switch here. So I would like to get some switch initiative going. He is going to withdraw. That is really cool. Props to you, Ben, if you're watching this by any, uh, by any chance that uh, you're using regular Manetric. That is very, very cool. There's the U-turn breaking the multi-scale on the Dragonite, which is really all that I needed to do. Um, now, we need to beware of the fact that this thing probably is going to start Dragon Dancing all over the place. I don't like that. Uh, I don't have a lot for this other than Stone Edge. Um... The problem is, if it doesn't kill, he probably has weakness policy, and that is very scary. So I'm going to go into the Alamomola. And I guess, are we going to go for Skull Burns? Or are we going to try to Toxic him? That is that is really the choice here. As much as I would love to go into Heracross, it's just not worth it. It really, really is not worth it. Um... I think we have to go for the Toxic here. I think we do. Because if he... We need that reliable damage. I mean, who's to say I'm actually going to get the Skull Burn? Do we really have to... You know what? We do have to fish for it. All right. We're going to fish for the Burns here. Let's go for the Skull. He is going to go for the Dragon Dance. Oh, dear. Here we go. We need to uh, pull some luck here and hope that he doesn't have a Lumberry. I hate doing this. I, I don't like that I have to fish for a burn. That's really the only uh, thing that we can do. And we get the burn. Wow. Two scalds, two burns. Roman and the luck of the Hax Gods are on our side today, ladies and gents. Uh, let's see. I will throw up a wish, and then I'll try to pass that over into something else. Uh, he's going to go for the Dragon Claw, which is not going to do much. Yeah, Alamomola takes that very nicely. He's going to get hurt by the Rocky Helmet. We get our Wish off, and I will pass that into probably Heracross. Yeah, I'm going to say Heracross, because Heracross can take a Dragon Claw. I don't think Flygon can. 
because it's super effective and, you know, it's still Dragonite, even though he's burned. Yep, so that's what I'm going to do. I mean, who's to say that this Dragonite doesn't have Roost as well, so we have to uh, think about that. In comes the Heracross. The beautiful pink Heracross. This is one of my favorite shinies of all time. It's just absolutely incredible. And now with that extra Dragon Dance, he is definitely going to outspeed, despite my scarf. But there's also the situation here where I can go for close combats because uh, he's going to be at such a low amount of HP that I should be able to just kill him off. So... Uh, yeah, we're going to go for the close combat. And, ho well, there's also the situation of lowering our defenses when there's a possibility that that Manectric is Choice Scarf, but I really don't think we have much of another play here. So, close combat it is. That's what we're going for. And he is going to go for the Dragon Claw. He's at plus two and burned. That still does well over half. But close combat plus the burn here is going to be enough. And that means we're going to get a Moxie boost. If he goes right into his Manectric here, I am going to be a little bit afraid that he's Choice Scarf. And I think I might just switch into Fl uh, Flygon. Despite the Moxie boost. I don't know. Because that Mamoswine is a problem. Okay, no, he goes into the Mamoswine here. I wonder if this is Scarfed. But even still, uh, I should, I believe I am Jolly Scarf with max speed, so I should be okay here, I think. Unless I'm thinking of, unless I'm just messing up the speed tiers, which is very possible. Very, very possible. Well, either way, I, it doesn't matter what I do, so I'm going to go for the close combat here. Uh, he does go for the Ice Shark. Okay, he was going for that priority. And somehow, that's enough? Really? Wow, okay. That is a bit unexpected, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I had 50 HP left, but apparently Ice Shard from a Mamoswine is ridiculously powerful. Uh, I will go ahead and Scald you here, as he's going to go for the EQ. Actually, I probably should have wished. Oh no, he's going to go into the Manectric. Oh, he he's Choice Banned. Okay, now I see. Now I see he's Choice Banned. He doesn't want to be locked into that. And that is going to take out the Manectric, which actually was something that I was more worried about because that can take out Alomomola very, very easily. Now, what are you going to lock yourself into? That is the question. Choice Band Mamoswine, that's not something you see very often. But, uh, let's see. I will go for a... I'll go for a Protect. Let's Protect just to see what he locks himself into. Just as a, a scouting thing, because obviously we're not getting lefties or anything, so there's that. He does go for the EQ. Um, I'll throw up a wish here. I'm, I'm still not perfectly confident that it's that it's Choice Fan, and I kind of want to play it safe. He could be trying to, to bluff it. Hmm. Is he? Is he really trying to bluff it? That would make sense for why it took out Heracross if it was Choice Fan. No, we're going to play a little bit risky. We're going to go into Flygon here. I think he's choice bad. I really do. I'm going to trust my instincts here and go into Flygon on the predicted Earthquake, which he does go for. We have the Levitate, so that is great. And we will see what he does here. Uh, I'm going to say that Superpower is probably our best bet because it's choice banned and it probably will KO. Yep, he's not going for the Ice Shard. He's definitely locked in. And there we go. That is... Oh, he's Focus Sash. Oh, he's not Choice Band at all. Icicle Crash is coming our way. And that's going to be a dead Flygon. Unless he misses, which he does not. That was a good bluff. That was a very good bluff. Still a bit curious as to how Heracross died from that HP. I know Mamoswine has a ridiculous amount of attack. And I was not invested with Heracross. But still. But still. We're in the clear here unless he gets a super ultra mega crit with an EQ, which is not going to happen. So uh, we pick up a win in our first battle, and this was a good match. It was a good 10-minute uh, match. I like that. I like that a lot, and we managed to get a victory, uh, which I was honestly thinking that it would be very possible if we went 1-5 with this team over the course of the three episodes that we're going to be using it. 
but uh, we already have that one victory, so we've already uh, met my expectations for this team, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that brings their record to 141 and 93. That is a 48 game differential, and we have a chance to move up to 49, back where we were a couple of episodes ago. Uh, if we pick up another victory in this episode, I doubt that that is going to happen. But I'm actually very happy that we won that match. And uh, again, Ben, if you happen to be watching this, props to you for a really cool team. Uh, I really enjoyed the Manectric especially. That was really cool. I, I like that you didn't have a Megastone on there and that it was likely choiced in some way. That is cool stuff. I got to bring my Manectric back. In fact, I got to use Mega Manectric. I haven't used it since the very beginning of X and Y. We're going up against a Japanese player here from uh, Chiba or Chiba or however you want to say it. And here we go. Here's the power. Scizor, Tyranitar, Azumarill, Mega Venusaur, Gengar, and Zapdos. So I, I kind of automatically want to just say this is going to be a loss, but we're not going to just, we're just not going to lay down here or lie down, I guess would be the correct terminology. We're going to go in and do our best to uh, pull out a win here. So let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Kind of want to lead off with the Sharpedo. Give Sharpedo some screen time here. And I would like to bring the Heracross again because Tyranitar is going to be an issue. Tyranitar is going to be a big issue. Uh, Alamomala can take on Scizor, Azumarill, and the Titar. Uh, the Zapdos and the Venusaur are the problem. I don't have any flying types. I have nothing for Venusaur. That's going to be, I think, the, the crux of this match. Um, hmm, what do I want to lead off with? I guess uh, the T-Tar might be something that he wants to lead off with here. So I'm going to... I'm going to lead off with Alamomola. I'm sorry, not Alamomola. I'm going to lead off with Sharpedo. We're going to bring the Alamomola and Heracross or Flygon. Neither one really can handle Venusaur, unfortunately. Uh, Heracross does have the Stone Edge for the Zapdos, which could be helpful since my other two Pokemon just get pooped on by it. But Flygon can handle the Zapdos, so there's that. But that, that Outlier is still going to be the Mega Venusaur, which if he brings, I can't do anything about it. So I guess that's what we're doing. Sharpedo, Alamomala, Flygon. So very similar to what we brought in the first battle. Except we're uh, getting Sharpedo some screen time here, which is good. I like Sharpedo a lot. I need to use it more. It's just I've had it in my box for a while now. I've got a, I've got several of them, and I haven't used any of them in a Wi-Fi match or on Battle Spot. I don't know what is wrong with me. I haven't used them in a showdown session either. I just like I said, I don't know what's going on with me. I'm just I'm I don't know. I'm slacking a little bit. Just a little bit. We are going to protect here, which should be blatantly obvious, but I'm going to do it anyway because I don't outspeed Gengar naturally. So we need to get that speed boost up. We may see a switch here. Uh, we may have to use that Destiny Bond for Mega Venusaur now that I'm thinking about it. We may have to save that. We'll see if it comes down to that. If I were my opponent, I would take one look at my team and go, Mega Venusaur has to come because it poops on everything. It destroys Alamomala and Sharpedo. Uh, you can just put Heracross to sleep, most likely, and, you know, close combat's really not going to do anything anyway. Uh, Raichu can't really touch it. Flygon can't kill it fast enough. Will-O-Wisp! That is interesting. Do I want to stay in and go for a crunch on that? I wish I had Flareon. Just kidding. Doesn't matter because that Flareon is guts. Uh, I don't want to switch anything in on a Willow, so... What we'll do is we'll crunch and then we'll debon, I guess, after that. So, there you go. See if he wants to switch now. Yeah, he's going to switch. He doesn't want to take that crunch. So, we have to watch out for that Willow with the Gengar. And out comes the Mega Venusaur. So, I'm thinking that we may just have to go ahead and go for the debon. Wait a minute. That did so much damage. Are you kidding me? Why did that do so much? Are you specially defensive? I mean, I know you didn't get your Mega Evolution off yet. Is Sharpedo going to two-shot this thing? Oh my gosh, that did so much. I, I'm, I'm blown away. 
Charpedo, I underestimated you. After this Mega Evolution, if you get a kill here, I will be I will be shocked. Because I know Mega, Mega Venusaur has its defenses go up. So I'm thinking Crunch will do less. He is going to Mega Evolve and stay in here. Even if Sharpedo goes down, I'm fine with that because we're going to basically kill this thing. Because we can come in with anything and uh, finish it off. Here's the Crunch. Come on, Sharpedo. Come on. Put your teeth into it. Yes. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Sharpedo is power, ladies and gents. Oh, my gosh. Okay, well, uh, problem eliminated. And here I, I was talking about, oh, Mega Venusaur poops on my whole team. Uh, woe is me. That was nuts. That was that was ridiculous. Um, okay, so now we're going to switch again and go into Alamomola because there's no way that uh, this Azumarill can take me on, I don't think. Probably going to go for a play rough here. Oh, wait, Belly Drum. Belly Drum. Okay, Aqua Jet. Fair enough. I could have... I, I, you resist my stab, so I guess there's that. You're going to take the Rocky Helmet damage. Wonder if you're Choice Band, maybe? I don't know what you are. I don't know what you are, but that did absolutely no damage. So I'm kind of reluctant to say that that is Choice Band damage, honestly. Uh, I kind of would like to Toxic you because, you know, fishing for a Skull Burn seems kind of silly. When I can just Toxic Stall you. And I really don't have any other answer to this, so... Toxic it is. Don't switch into Gengar. Don't switch into Gengar. Okay, you're going to Belly Drum. That's actually not the worst thing in the world. Unless you just one-shot everything, in which case that is kind of the worst thing in the world. And we're probably going to have to fodder off uh, Flygon, unfortunately. He's going to take a little bit of Toxic damage this time, and then we will go for the Protect, which should be obvious. Then we can... Hmm. Yeah, we have enough to take this out because we can fodder off Flygon, go into Sharpedo, protect again, then switch into Alamomola, see if we can take a hit. If we can't, then we can, or if we can't, then we can go back into Sharpedo, protect again, then this thing will just be dead. And I'm just going to Toxic Stall, as blatant as can be, and I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. I'm going for it. I'm not going to waste that performance by Sharpedo just because Azumarill gets a freaking belly drum off. So I'm, I'm going to be that guy right now. I'm going to be that guy. And he's not going to want to switch out and waste that belly drum. There's the play rough. Uh, what would be even better is if he misses the play rough. That would be actually very hilarious. Very, very hilarious. And Flygon can't do anything to Gengar. So there's no reason to keep it around. No reason whatsoever. So here we go. Here we go. Into the Flygon. Miss your play rough. Come on now. Miss it. No. He connects. And that is that is about as overkill as you'll ever see, ladies and gents. A huge power stab play rough coming off an Azumarill at plus six. A super effective on a Flygon. And I think another a turn of toxic damage is going to kill this thing. So we're going to go into Sharpedo and we're going to protect. Are we? Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's going to be enough to take it out. And he he may try to switch to save that Aqua Jet. I don't know. Because the Rocky Helmet would kill him off anyway. So I don't really see the point in that. Protect it is. He knows it's coming. I'm playing as predictable as possible. And I just got lucky that I brought two Pokemon that have the... Uh, what do you call it? The Protect. And there we go, down goes the Azumarill from just Toxic Damage and Belly Drum. So thank you for uh, kind of helping me out with that. <laughs> if you didn't go for the Belly Drum, I would not have been able to Toxic Stall you as effectively. All right, I think we might have this in the bag. I don't know. I do not know. Uh, I know we outspeed this unless it's Scarf Gengar. So I'm going to go for a Crunch here, which should bring him down to his Sash, which is likely. Yeah, we do outspeed. Come on, be something else that's not Sash. Oh, he's not Sash. Sharpedo picking up uh, technically all three kills. And we're going to get a double victory today. Unbelievable. I was not expecting that at all. I talked so, so much just nonsense garbage about this team. I'm sorry. I'm legitimately sorry. That's what happens when uh, you don't have confidence when you should, I guess. I, I don't know. 
I don't know. And if you're okay with toxic stalling here and there, I admit that was kind of lame. That was not kind of, that was very lame. But at that point, I was like, I'm going to do what it takes to win here. Uh, so we got two victories today. 142 and 93 is our record. 49 game differential. We have a chance to jump up over the 50 game differential in the next episode. And we start 2-0 with this team. Who would have thought that? Looking at this thing, going on to battle spot. Uh, the, the most surprising thing in this entire episode for me was Sharpedo two-shotting a Venusaur. A Mega Venusaur. Granted, he switched in when he wasn't Mega, so I don't know if that would have made a difference or not. Uh, I think that was just a bad play on his part. I think he should have switched in the Azumarill, because now that I'm thinking about it, uh, you know you resist the stabs. So why would you not switch in your Azumarill? I know that you wanted to belly drum and all that, and you know save the citrus and all that fun stuff, but I think you could have won that match and at least forced me to go for the Destiny Bond on the the Mega Venusaur, and you know not being able to take it out as easily. Otherwise, so uh, that was the turning point. Definitely the turning point. I guess we shouldn't question too much. I'm just happy we got the victory. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you did, make sure you're leaving a like rating and a comment or whatever you would like to do. And I will see you all next time. But until then, game on.